The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to talk about testamentary special needs trusts versus standalone special needs trusts. We'll explain what each is, and then we'll talk about the pros and cons of each. So first, let's talk about special needs trusts in general and how they work. A special needs trust allows a person with a disability to accumulate assets and earn income without negatively impacting means-tested government benefits. So certain government benefits that people with disabilities are entitled to receive are means-tested, meaning that if you earn over a certain threshold of income or own over a certain threshold of assets, then the amount of government benefits that you're going to receive are reduced accordingly the more you earn or the more assets that you have. So the point of a special needs trust is to allow someone with a, a disability to uh, earn income and accumulate assets without negatively affecting these means-tested government benefits. The reason this works is that assets owned by the special needs trust as opposed to owned in the disabled adult's individual name uh, are not counted as the disabled adult's assets for the pur purpose of the means test. So there's two types of special needs trusts, testamentary special needs trust and standalone special needs trust. Let's talk about what each kind is. A testamentary special needs trust is one that is created as part of somebody else's will or revocable trust. So it doesn't come into existence until the death of the third party whose will or revocable trust created it. So basically, this is a situation where uh, a parent or other loved one's estate plan creates for some assets upon their death to be transferred into a special needs trust that's created at that time. So it's a kind of a sub-document as part of a will or a different revocable trust. A standalone special needs trust, on the other hand, is what it sounds like. It's a document that comes into effect immediately. It's not part of somebody else's estate plan. It's something that is uh, effective right away, and you don't have to wait for the creator to pass away before it comes into existence. There's a couple benefits of a standalone special needs trust over a ten testamentary special needs trust. Um, and in general, all things being equal, we prefer to see standalone special needs trusts. There's a couple situations where testamentary trusts are more appropriate that we'll talk about in a moment. But here's the reasons that you generally want to go with a standalone special needs trust uh, in most situations. First is that a standalone special needs trust can receive assets from multiple sources. So with a testamentary trust, you're only getting assets as part of the estate of the person who created the testamentary trust. So it's it's not something that everybody can transfer their assets to whenever they like. So if you have multiple loved ones who would like to give gifts to the special needs trust, uh, or if both the, uh, the disabled adult and the loved one who's creating the trust would like to transfer their assets and income into the trust, then you want a standalone special needs trust because it can accept gifts from multiple sources. It's more efficient that way. Second, the benefits uh, uh, can be accessed by the beneficiary immediately. Um, so again, it doesn't happen. It, the trust doesn't come into existence upon the death of the creator. It comes into existence as soon as it's executed. And right away, you can start transferring assets into the trust and benefiting the beneficiary with those assets. In a testamentary trust situation, you often have to wait, even after, after the creator passes away, you may have to wait a year while the estate goes through probate before the special needs trust actually is effective and owns any assets. The third reason that a, a standalone special needs trust is, tends to be more beneficial than a testamentary trust is that a, a standalone trust can be named as a beneficiary on loved one's account. So, you can name a special needs trust that's a standalone trust as the beneficiary of a life insurance policy or of a retirement account, and multiple loved ones can do this, and then when those people pass away, then those assets are going to be transferred directly into the standalone trust. It, it doesn't work for a testamentary trust. Finally, a testamentary trust is subject to its creator's creditors when the estate happens. So as you go through probate, you have to pay off the creditors of the person who created the trust, say the parent of the disabled adult or the loved one, um, before you can actually transfer any assets into the special needs trust. So this means that if the estate is no longer solvent or doesn't have enough assets to uh, pay both the creditors and transfer what you would like to transfer into the special needs trust for the care of the disabled adult, the disabled adult loses out. The creditors get paid first, and those assets may never make it to the disabled adult special needs trust.
So that's basically the reasons why you would want a standalone special needs trust as opposed to a testamentary special needs trust. It's a more efficient document. It can accept assets from multiple sources. People can name it as a beneficiary on accounts and life insurance policies, and it's the benefits are uh, received by the disabled adult immediately and not subject to creditors. There are there's one limited situation in which a testamentary special needs trust may be more appropriate than a standalone special needs trust. And that's if all of the following things are true. Not one, not two, but all three. First, the beneficiary does not have any income or assets of their own. The, the reason this is important is because if they have their own income or assets, they're not going to want to wait until uh, the creator of the trust passes away for the testamentary trust to be effective. You're going to want to be able to transfer both the, cr the creator of the trust assets and the beneficiary's assets into the trust right away so that they're not going to be penalized for those assets and income that the disabled adult have uh, in the means test. The second situation is uh, only one third party seeks to transfer assets into the trust. So remember, in a testamentary trust situation, only the creator of the trust can transfer assets into the trust. This is fine if they're the only person who wants to do so. If there's multiple loved ones who want to transfer assets into the trust, then you're going to want a standalone special needs trust. Finally, and this is the real kicker, um, assuming those two other things are true, that the beneficiary doesn't have any assets or income and that nobody else wants to transfer assets into the trust other than the creator, the one time you would really want to have a testamentary special needs trust as opposed to a standalone special needs trust is if the person creating the trust actually needs to have access to those assets that are intended for the trust during his or her lifetime. A testamentary special needs trust allows you to kind of hedge your bets and, you know, if you think you're, you might need those assets and you only want to pass along the assets to the extent that you don't need to use them for yourself during your lifetime, then you want a testamentary special needs trust because you don't have to actually transfer the assets in to the trust right away. It's whatever's left over after your lifetime. So basically, if you actually have a pool of money right now that you know you want to use for the benefit of a disabled adult, you should transfer that immediately into a special needs trust that's standalone. If you would like the disabled adult to inherit a certain amount of money, um, and, and there's no other factors present whereby they would benefit from a standalone special needs trust, then a testamentary special needs trust makes sense. But you can still have a standalone special needs trust and name it in your will or trust to inherit certain amounts of money. So you can accomplish a lot of the things that you would accomplish by retaining your assets um, in a testamentary trust with a standalone trust. The only time you'd want the testamentary trust if there's no other benefit to having immediate use of a special needs trust for the disabled adult. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, and SoundCloud, or you can subscribe to our email list at learn-about-law.com. Any way you subscribe, you'll be notified of our daily article and video posts uh, that we make on various topics. We do a different article and video every day, so stay tuned. If you uh, need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. The 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have offices all around Chicago land for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.